All right, hello YouTube. Welcome to round 13 of the Scrabble Players Championship. Um, yeah, continuing the coverage. So you see on my uh, on the top left here, this is the standings after round uh, 12. So uh, Jackson is in first place after beating me uh, by 11. Kevin Fraley in second. I'm in third. I'm playing Joey Malik, who I think was in seventh at the time or something. Uh, and if you know what happened in the tournament already, you know the significance of this this pairing, this matchup, me against Joey Malik. It's the first time we faced uh, faced each other, and I think we faced each other five more times after this. And uh, yeah, so let's jump into the game. Let's remove the scoreboard. And yeah, let's take a look. So Joey uh, provided his racks. He actually will have full racks here and I won't. Uh, there's a few racks that I just, I didn't record my racks. It's the second time. Like, am I supposed to be a professional? Like, what is this? Anyways, so sorry about that. Um, I just, there's a bunch of positions where you don't know what my rack is. Same with the Jack Peters game. Hopefully that's the last time I have to say this. Uh, usually it's only once a tournament that this happens. So Joey opened with uh, wrist. And I only know that I had this play of Unary, and I was keeping some really bad tiles here, I think. Like, I think I had maybe even another U. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, all I remember is that I just hated everything here. Uh, just couldn't really figure out what a good play would be and just decided to play Unary. That's all I can tell you. Um, and Cream, I don't know. Joey said put that I had E-E-E-O. Or yeah, Joey played Krem. He put that I had EEO, but maybe that was just him designated designating exchange. I know that I exchanged four. Uh, I think I kept DES on my exchange. Um, and Joey immediately bingos with Lasserted. So, I mean, in this position, uh, I'm already down 33, bingos for 80. And uh, luckily for me, I'm able to bingo back because um, I'm down 111 already on turn three. Uh, and I decided to play D-Nudes, which could have been a small mistake. It's usually more of a mistake to spend too long on these racks. All of the best bingos start with D-E and this position. Uh, and I could have decided to be a bit more aggressive, set up an S, like maybe play something like Descend. Uh, so I can show you there's stuff like Defends. I mean, it's the same really. But descend differences, it creates a, a lane for myself. Um, and yeah, and it also creates this, which is very hard to get rid of. Um, and I'm already down by a lot. I'm going to be down by 30 points and a turn. So it's possible I want to be a bit more aggressive here. But I, I was like, yeah, I, I can come back maybe. I don't want to be too crazy. If Joey does have one of the last two S's. I'm just giving him 40 points for no reason. So I decided to play D nudes. Uh, I didn't want to think too much of it either. Uh, but I thought I was going to lose this game. Joey played Furrow, and I draw very well. I don't remember where my other two tiles were. They weren't great. Um, so I took a little bit of time trying to see if there was maybe some other idea. I don't remember if I had an R or not. I think I was considering Azide for 45. And I was like, no, nah, I got to score 70 here. So I play sleeves for 70. Luckily, Joey doesn't hit me too hard on the A column, which is what I was worried about. He just plays MIG. And I continue scoring with Raspi, and I'm ahead by 23 points. And look at Joey's rack. So Joey kept AIS and drew EUUU. -U -U. Um, according, yeah, according to him. Uh, it's funny, his annotation, I think, says that he drew AUUU. -U -U. Um, but like the rack he provided said he kept AIS. Doesn't make a big difference. So he draws three U's. Um, the last three U's, there was only three U's left and he exchanges them. And I have this position, which I mean, I'm up 23 and he's just exchanged five. So I'm feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm actually in this game. I have the advantage. Uh, and I couldn't really decide between playing Obi or Obia uh, the, of note, the play of Obtain, although it does score well, uh, because he exchanged five, he's pretty likely to just be able to hammer this spot next turn. So it doesn't make sense to take the extra points here and create a big spot where he can just 
tie the game up um, pretty easily. So I decided to play Obia, just citing that there are 22 vowels here and 24 consonants. But um, upon simulation, because there aren't too many A's to duplicate, too many I's either, keeping A-I-N-T uh, similar to keeping I-N-T and taking uh, three extra points. So the A is worth actually around three points here. Very close between Obia and Obi. I definitely play Obia again. I do not want to uh, find myself with too many vowels, especially after he probably exchanged a bunch of vowels. So Joey responds with P, and again, I only have a partial rack here. Uh, I know that I had T-I-N with Obia, um, just based on what I wrote, wrote on my score sheet. Uh, and here I play Vex. I was not a huge fan of it, but I just had to get rid of that V and that X. Uh, the reason it's not a good play is clear clear here, where Joey was just able to play Act. Uh, he could have scored 50 here. Luckily, he didn't. Um, so he scores 38 with Act, but I definitely saved his rack but um luckily for me i drew this nice bingo of tutoring and i think the word trouting so the word trouting is also good i wasn't sure of it i think it's slightly better uh luckily for me it didn't actually matter so i would have played insulate uh, whether or not it was an o or a u here but i think i should have uh, played trouting i just wasn't 100 percent sure here and then I draw this rack and I'm just like, whoa, what's going on here? So I realize that I have Kaid for 42. That's the first thing I see because I want to get rid of my Q. And I'm like, wait a second. I have this huge play of Hodge for 56. And I could draw U for Quid. I could draw the last A maybe for Kaid. And I could draw an I for QI. So I'm definitely keeping my Q here. Uh, just scoring the 56 points. I was not a huge fan of opening this up. If he gets Jive down or something, or Jehu, like, they've just given that to him. But, yeah, with my 13-point lead, it felt nice taking a 69-point lead with a lot of chances to score 40 points next turn. Uh, and with this terrible unseen pool full of vowels and U's and duplicates, it seemed like I was in very good shape here. And here Joey responds with Bool. A good, nice, nice, good play to score 36 and stay in the game. And I draw U. So here I decided, obviously, I'm not going to play Juke. Um, but I did consider it, again, to go for a QI. And maybe I could go for Kaid again. But I don't want to catch myself with the Q here. So, of course, I just play Quid for 42. I'm up by 75. Five in the bag. And this is Joey's rack. So he plays if in fact, keeping IIOV blank. And from my perspective now, E-E-K-N-N-O-T, I'm just like, whoa, this is great. Like, can he even bingo here? Look at those four O's. Like, what does he even have? Like, could he even bingo? And I'm just like, well, let's look. So I do some calculation and I realize that if he has the best possible bingo putting the v here on the triple letter score and going towards the end he's gonna win uh same with if he plays something doubling the v and hitting a triple uh so it would be this triple here so I'm like okay well, let's look a little bit and the more i looked it's like this, i don't think he has anything like let's see maybe if there's like all o's in the bag he can bingo well, there are a few draws he can actually bingo with here. Um, so if I draw, uh, what was it? Let me find this game. Thought I had it up. Oh, this is the wrong window. Hold on a sec. So there, there are a few draws that will actually um, bingo for Joey. Uh, so if I draw O, 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 if I draw A, O, O, I, O, O, I, O, V, or I, I, V, he will actually be able to bingo. So it's actually a decent amount of um, chances that he has. But that's that's five draws out of however many. It's like, I don't know, like 100? I'm supposed to know the math here. Um, how many draws are possible with three in the back? But in this position, 
I I just figured he just can't win whenever. Uh, he's probably not even going to bingo. I'm not going to even waste time trying to block. So I played Joke. And he immediately slaps down Visional. And the game ends. Me winning by 20 points. Uh, and this is funny because it's it's weird. Like both Joey's that are top players. Joey Malik, Joey Krafchik. Uh, they're both phenomenal players. They have phenomenal vision. No pun intended, I guess. Well, there was because I... Anyways, uh, but they both play very like fast sometimes when they should take some time. And actually, there's a higher scoring bingo here for Joey. Luckily, the score wasn't close enough for it to matter. But uh, if you found it, that's correct. He has Pavilion for 74 points. Uh, so 10 more points, and it would have brought him within 10. But uh, yeah, I just find that like both of both of the Joey's uh tend to sometimes just be a little bit like i don't know just playing too fast sometimes uh that was one of those moments so i got 10 spread points yay for me so that was uh crazy i really didn't think i was winning this game after three moves but i ended up uh just drawing pretty well for the rest of the game while joey was drawing poorly and he drew u u u e after mig but and I thought it was a joke, but it's not a joke. And that's another pun. I drew O O O. I drew O O O out of the back. I was like, oh my God, what is this? So it's a very weird distribution of tiles this game um, at the end of the game. But uh, came out with the win. And that brings me now to a record of 10 and 3 plus 480. And if we look at the scoreboard again, um, the next round, how do I, oops, why can't I go to the next round? So weird. Um, give me a sec. So now after, um round 13 there we go okay, new features are new features yeah all right so uh you can see that i have now made my way to second place back to second place um 11 and uh, 11 and 2 for jackson with tons of spread 10 and 3 plus 482 for me and who's in third place but will anderson uh, after a nice victory over ed and of note the round before, Will had just won by 309 points against Jack Peters. I think this is the highest score of the tournament, 674 uh, for Will Anderson. And yeah, this was nice. This is a nice top three, uh, even top four. And uh, the next game I was playing was against Kevin Fraley. So he was first to act. Let's remove this again. And let's go to the game. So Kevin was first, and he opens with Frond. And in this position, I sort of had a little bit of a trouble figuring out if it made sense to do what I did. Now, the normal play here looked like Brain for 14, keeping HNS. Uh, but I also considered Bairn which just seemed a bit worse defensively, putting this A next to the triple letter score. But I ended up playing Banish for 26, just getting rid of my S and keeping a lone N. And the reason for that was this uh, spot I was giving, uh, I have to end it in A to score points. So it wasn't a huge spot. Uh, and I just figured, yeah, like just take the points here so no need to score only 14 points. It just seemed like a very middling play to just play brain. But um, the engine thinks that the plays are very similar. And when an engine thinks that a play that gets rid of an S is similar in value to a play that retains an S, it's actually probably better to retain the S because in most circumstances, the S has a higher value than the engine thinks due to something called recursion. And recursion is a theme that you'll see very often with an S and sometimes with other setup plays. 
but the S, when you have spots for it that are decent, uh, there's always some amount of value in retaining it uh, that is not measured in just points versus uh, points plus leave. So what we call equity. Uh, the S will have a superior value to the equity that is given to it when there are S hooks on the board. So after brain, there's an S hook here, there's an S hook here. So the value of the S is pretty good. And depending on what happens next turn, I might want to keep the S again. And the engine won't actually recognize this most of the time. So for that reason, when I get into positions where an engine tells me, okay, playing the S or keeping the S, it's around the same, I usually tend towards uh, the idea that I made a slight mistake. Um, but the same could be said if Kevin has an S in this position, him retaining it might actually be bad because I have one, or it might be good because I have one. So it gets very complicated, but all, all to say that um, I probably should have just play brain here. Play banish, he bingos with vrooming, and I draw four E's, and I play defense. Uh, this wasn't really a defensive play. Uh, it kind of looks like one, but it does open the C column. Um, so it does open an area of the board that was otherwise not available, but it does block a lot of things in the process. Here, Kevin responds with Bricky, and I just start drawing pretty poorly here. I play guide rather than hide just to make the spot way less valuable, and the H is a better title than the G. He plays uplit, and in this position, I don't know how familiar everyone is. I don't even know if a video was done about this yet, but there is a hilarious word available here of gum white, which I saw and I just was like, is this a word, is this a word, is this a word? And I kept on just trying to remember, like I know that black gum or gum white is a word and not both of them. I knew that one of them was a word. And the reason that I kept thinking gum white was a word is because it's a famous phony that Matthew Tunnicliffe has gotten away with, if I'm not mistaken. And so it took me like three minutes in the position. I wasted so much time just like trying to talk myself in and out of gum white. If you can believe that. It's just so crazy. I don't even know if Matthew knows about this, but yeah. Uh, I ended up playing whim, which is the best play. Gum white is not a word. It's phony. Uh, black gum is a word. Uh, so Vrau comes down for 26, and I'm down 62. I just, I'm making middling plays now. I just have no S, I have nothing. So I play Uke, just keeping as best I can A, D, E, T. Hopefully I can try and draw something from this D. I'm not feeling very good. But then Kevin plays U, I draw the J, and I'm able to play Jug for 33. I draw the S as well. So now things are improving tremendously for me and Kevin takes a long time and then plays ticks and this play of ticks was devastating because it blocked the bingo I had from the C and uh, so here I had to do something uh, less than amazing here uh, and play aged for 26 but still a game. I'm only down 13. If he's struggling with racks, I can come back even without a bingo. So here Kevin plays Vol, and you can tell, like, he has a lot of consonants, right? Like, he's playing Ticks, he's playing Vol, he played Vrow, he played Uplit. I mean, the only thing was him playing U. So he probably has, like, maybe one vowel here. But if he has one vowel, where are all these other vowels? And you can see I kept... AEST and drew AII, and this is where I'm just like, okay, look at all these vowels. Two games in a row, tons of vowels unseen. I have to exchange, so I exchange, keeping EST, so as not to duplicate A's or I's. I'm okay duplicating an E, but I just doesn't make sense to keep an A or an I here because it's just, there's so many vowels to draw. And here, Kevin plays in, and I'm back to down 60. But luckily for me, you can see my rack. Very, very good. So seeing the unseen letters here, 
I had a fool's hope that I was going to be in great position after my play here. And I decided to play Desolate. I can also play Delators, but why would I give him an S with so many vowels unseen? So I played Desolate, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm up, I'm up big. I just want to avoid this Q, maybe. And he bingos right back with Serenata, and I'm just like, what the hell? Because then I look at my rack, and I see I have six vowels. Just like, well, all my progress is lost. I didn't save my progress. Always save your progress. So I have to exchange again. So this is my second exchange of the game. I almost never exchange. Maybe I'll exchange once in like three or four games. So now I've exchanged twice. And Kevin scores really nicely with Oak. And I'm down 65 and I've just drawn the cube looking really really bad but i see all these vowels i'm like okay maybe he's struggling maybe he's struggling and there's seven in the bag i can still exchange so i exchange q o i i exchange q o i and it looked crazy but it's just because three eyes unseen no consonants the b is usually a terrible letter but it's really good here as a consonant, any consonant is good. Take what you can get. Kevin plays tap, and here I have a bingo. And where do you think it plays? Doesn't look like it plays, does it? But it does. Very important to remember, serenata is not a plural. It is a noun. Serenata takes an S. Serenate, the plural. Another plural of serenata does not. And here, I think I make a fatal error. And I decide that my best chance is to play the bingo, hope to draw the Q, and the L. And that should be enough. If he has seven vowels, I should be OK. But he doesn't. He has six vowels, and the game ends. After he plays Ali, I cannot play my Q. I play OI. He plays Vain. I play REI with no time left. Slightly better to play something else. I don't remember what. <laughs> I think maybe just tape. Um, no, tape is equivalent. Then he plays Goa. And I lose the game 385 to 422. Very devastating. I exchanged three times and came back three times, basically. So what was the problem? I think I had a better, pract at least practical chance in the bidder's position by playing Obit. There are some interesting moves, actually, in this position. I can even play Bit here and claim that he just doesn't have any good plays making bite and hopefully I can bingo out but it's I think better to leave Serenata's alone and if he has what I'm hoping he has after bitters I should still be okay as long as I don't draw the cue but if he doesn't have the cue then I might be drawing it but if he does have the cue this could work too what is he supposed to do with the cue. I'm rhyming a lot. I might even end up being able to cue stick him and somehow pull this off, even though I'm down by 90 points. Well, I'll be down 70 or so after a bit. Um, exactly 70. So the idea with Obit, uh, I could also just play OB, keep the extra consonant, but it's not necessary. Uh, the idea is that. I'm leaving two in the bag, which is pretty good because he can then only play one tile if he doesn't want to empty the bag. Uh, which, if he does that, I could still probably win. Uh, and if he plays two tiles, he's emptying the bag. And it's just really hard to imagine a lot of plays that will just block everything. But something like Ilya should usually do the trick. So that's what I was most worried about. Uh, but I think I just have to hope he's not able to block properly, despite how easy it might look. 
to do so. Uh, but yeah, the problem is I'm basically only bingoing in this area and he can knock out a lot of that with something like Ilya. But I could also still draw into Siri 8, for example, uh, making TI and EL. So it's still possible to win this game. All in all, I think I should have played Obit. I just couldn't stomach it. I thought this probably gave me the best chance, but maybe I was too too hopeful and too weak. And uh, luckily for me, the play of bitters doesn't have a huge, huge downside in terms of spread. So I'm never losing by a ton after bitters. Whereas after Obit, if I don't draw anything or if he blocks and I draw the Q, like I could be losing by a lot more than 37. So game ends 422-385. That's a 37 point loss. And uh, round 14, my record is 10 and 4 plus 443, I think. Um, let's bring the scoreboard back up and see. See if my math is my math. Nope. 445. So I must have had something wrong previously. All right, let's fix it. 445. Um, and yeah, next game is against Noah Walton. Uh, I'll bring you guys, I think, maybe just that game uh, tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I could show you guys. Yeah, I'll show you guys the two boards. Let's remove this. Let's show the games. So this is the Joey game. Uh, and the next game, the um, Kevin game. So same board, different story. Uh, goodbye until next time.